Hey everyone and welcome to another Tool Talk. If you're new here and you like what you see at any point during this video, just hit that little icon in the bottom right hand corner uh, and hit that subscribe. Really appreciate it. And as always at the end of the video, if you enjoy it, hit that thumbs up. It means a lot to me and I look forward to y'all's comments in any video. So, today's Tool Talk is on the first Bridge City Tools plane I've been able to afford, but it's a cool little tool. It's the HP 8 Mini Block Plane, and it's right here in front of me, and they had a really great sale on it where you could get it for less than 100 bucks. so I grabbed it, and I also got the other little things it recommends on the website, the, the honing guide, the 50 degree blade, and then the jig to set it all up and make sharpening a breeze. So I'm going to go over this tool, let you know my likes and my dislikes, as well as if it's worth spending the extra money on the extra blade and sharpening kit. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, so here is the box that the plane comes in. It's very nice, got the metallic Bridge City Toolworks logo. And in the little bag is the Allen wrench you'll need to adjust the depth skids and the instructions. And here is how it comes packaged. Very, very nice, a pretty dense foam. And first impressions are pretty fantastic. It's a beautiful little plane and I will set this aside. So the first time I opened it and I looked at it I had some questions and it started with the instructions and so here I want to give a special thanks to Bridge City Tools uh, customer service as they are excellent. They responded within a day I'm pretty sure and just super knowledgeable. Um, my first question was that the blade in the instructions says it's been lapped to a mirror polish. And I'll go ahead and show you this now. Uh, it's not. <laughs> um, so I, I shot the team an email and they let me know that the instructions were recycled from the original plane and that was not made by Harvey Industries and so things have changed since then and they have yet to just update the instructions and so that's fine uh, I don't think it has anything to do with the performance like it's very flat and that's all that really matters So that was my first question. Alright, so while I have the blade out, I'll just go ahead and show you the insides. It's milled from a block of aluminum. And the bed is extremely flat. It has the same finish that the rest of the plane has. And here you can see the mechanism to move the blade forwards and backwards. is right here. There's no lateral adjustment, but the blade fits pretty tight in there. You can see there's two holes, so you can get as much of the blade life as you can out of it. And it just drops in. Onto the blade. This little magnetic locking thing is pretty sweet. I really like it because it allows for the tension that's being pushed on the blade to be adjusted. This is loose, so it's not putting any unwanted stress on the blade when you use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it out until it engages the blade and I'll show you what the tolerance of the threads are before it engages the blade again. So it's all the way back and now I'm going to move the blade forward and I'll show you how many turns it takes. There's a half one full turn, one and a half, 
two full turns. Two and a half. Uh, right there. So just a hair over two and a half turns before the blade is engaged. And so if you would wanting a comparison, here is the Veritas apron plane. That's by far my favorite tool that I have. And the blade is engaged now. So, not quite a qu quarter of a turn. If you're wondering what tolerances are with other tools. And if you're going the budget route, here is the Stanley Sweetheart block plane. Half a turn, whole turn, one and a quarter turns. So, on the spectrum of a premium plane, this is a bit loose. Uh, it's very loose, actually. Uh, but that's fine. It, if you can get this plane like I did for less than $100, that's great. But I do want to say that this plane on its own retails on their website with no discounts at $165. So that's more money than any other block plane on the market. And for a size comparison, this was 60. Obviously, it's not as premium, but this was 100. And you can just see the size difference. So you're not getting a lot of plane. What you are paying for are the little depth skids, the little feet that come on the plane. And I'm going to show you how those work on a project right now. So if you want to adjust the feet, you grab your little Allen wrench that comes with it and you just loosen these screws until this can move, come around to the other side, do the same. And so here is the thinnest one. So all I gotta do is set it on there, so you barely fit, which is perfect. And what I'm gonna do now is tighten the feet back up. Now this is all set to go through in plane. And the reason I did it like this is there's some variance in the height and even the thinnest one. And so now what I'll do is I will adjust the blade to protrude and that way I can get a nice cut that's just a hair thinner than the original. Alright, so that's how the little legs work. Works pretty well. Um, I do want to address some other things uh, that I had some concerns with that again Bridge City Tools was very uh, happy to answer for me and I really appreciate it. The mouth adjustment. As you can see it's all the way back. So typically the job of this is to close the gap between the blade and this piece to make finer or heavier cuts. The wider the mouth, the heavier the cut. Well, as you can see it's backed all the way out and the blade has not made contact. So I'm going to push the blade out until it would make a nice cut. I'm still not feeling it. Okay, so that is where I feel the blade protruding just a hair and there is no room to move this adjuster at all so to me it seems kinda like a moot point to even include it so I messaged them and asked did I just get a lemon for my plane or is this serving a purpose that I'm not sure exists and it does in fact they let me know that the throat adjustment is 
purely for when you get to the end of your blade, the end of the life, and you're on your last legs in the little hole, you're able to close the throat just a bit more to get a little bit more life out of your blade. And so that is what Bridge City says it's for. Um, do with that information what you want. The other thing that kind of bothered me, and that th this is what's going to make it go down from a five-star plane to a four-star for me, is the bottom. So, it's hard to tell in this light, but you can see grooves in it. And I don't know if you can hear that, but... That's not smooth. It's ground flat, but essentially with 60 grit sandpaper. And it's so rough that it actually filed my nails down a bit. Uh, and I asked the customer service about that, and they didn't really get back to me on that one. Uh, they said that it was hard to hear on the computer whether or not it was smooth or not. They said it should be flat. So I want to show you a comparison to other tools. Here's the Stanley. Now this is comes in at less than half of the price of the Bridge City tools. And I mean it is just smooth. It's very smooth and it was very flat. And I haven't done anything to the bottom. Same with the Veritas. I've had this plane for a while and I mean it it's very smooth still. So, I can't give this plane five stars just because they charge more for a smaller tool. So it's very important that this is smooth because that dictates how easy the plane is going to glide over it. So, there's the plane and here are the two things that Bridge City Tools website will recommend to you when you purchase it. And so, this is the blade. So, here is the kit. It's the 50 degree blade. It's got a nice little etching on it. And as you can see, it is not a mirror finish either, but it is very flat. And it is kind of sharp out of the box as well. Like, it's usable, but not great. And then here is the little mini guide to sharpen your blades. And these were all on sale as well. They do sell all the time. If you ever wish to buy a Bridge City tool, don't pay full price. Just wait a week. And the idea behind this little set is that you drop the blade in there. This wall keeps it square, and then you just put it on there, lock it down, and there is your sharpening setup. And yes, I would highly recommend getting this. It's a tiny little blade. Uh, the smaller it gets, the harder it is to sharpen as far as tool blades go. And for 30 bucks, absolutely. That is what I paid for it about now retail it's 55 degree it's 55 dollars but if you can find it on sale then get it uh this is the other kit the extra blade that's at a different degree and then the honing kit I guess to sharpen it and so it's the same principle you put the blade in there but then you use the little shelf and then lock it down and then that essentially is your angle and you can see it's not touching I went ahead and asked the proper way to do this while I had customer service on the line and they said it is not supposed to be using both wheels it's just the front and of course that is right another thing I want to address is the blade angle it says 50 degrees 
and this is 25, but they are very, very similar, which got me wondering, okay, let's get out my little gauge and just figure out where it goes. So 30 degrees, nope, 32.5 that's just about dead on there's no gap there is a gap at 35 so 35 is too big 32 and a half is where the standard grind was at which is not even close to 50 at all and so when i asked customer service I said what happened there is that a is that a goof i mean it's not the end of the world i'll just sharpen it myself but that's going to take a very long time to do. And they said, well, the bevel, the micro bevel, as you can see, there's a two, there's the grind, and then another place that's been sharpened even more, if you can see. They said that's a 10 degree bevel. That's a steep bevel. Uh, if you have the Veritas, Mach 2 sharpening system they recommend a 2 degree micro bevel so that's a big jump uh, and that's what I use and it has served me very well over the years so if it's 32 and a half that micro bevel will bring it to 42 and a half and they said that based upon the bed of the plane and the final micro bevel it equals 50 which it does Kind of. But it's a little disappointing because every other tool I own from so many other brands, the number that's displayed on here is what you set your sharpening jig up to. And so if this is a 50 degree bevel, I expect the grind to be 50 degrees. Not having to do math of, well, subtract the bed angle of the plane the normal grind, and then the micro bevel, add it all together and hope it equals 50. That, that's a bit much to ask, but what are you going to do? Uh, nothing. <laughs> that, it is what the company does, and so if that deters you from getting that extra blade, then there you go. But that's, Pretty much all I got on this plane. Uh, as far as functionality, it works great. All right, so I went over the plane, showed a little bit of it in action, and I let you know what I thought in the close-up. But honestly, if you can get this plane for under a hundred dollars, I think it really is worth it. Aside from the bottom being a nail file and the ten-degree micro bevel. Uh, it, it still is a genuinely good hand tool and as you can see in the project that I'm currently working on I, it was just the perfect tool for the job and the blades were sharp enough to use right out of the box uh, and the bottom of the plane is flat as well even though it's rough um, but that's it if you have this plane please let me know in the comments what you think and if you don't and you're looking for it, I will put the link down in the description below. And it's a great little tool to have in your shop. And until next time, thanks. See you.